Is this a familiar saying to you? You finish your project, you shut your power off, only to have this happen. Spindle drop. Let's see if we can't fix that. I have a couple of solutions that are pretty easy. Something you're interested in? Stick around. It's coming right up. Welcome back to Mechanical and Electrical Things. This is Jerome JT62 coming at you again with another one. In this one, we're going to address the spindle drop issue. If you have a spindle, such as this 2.2 kilowatt version, and you see them all over eBay, um, they're all the same. I don't care where you get them from. Maybe not the same, but they're all way about the same. That's 11 pounds. You have to account for all of the weight within this whole head itself. And that's, especially on this particular machine, um, you have to account for the stepper motor. That's three pounds. I'm calling the, the rail back here that the bearings ride on. That's probably a good three pounds, three and a half, maybe four. The extrusion itself, the 1540, we're going to call that at two pounds, the mount, and the dust shoe. We're looking at about 20 pounds of downforce when you shut your machine off. And that is why your spindle is going to settle on you. If you have a smaller router, for example, you're not going to have to worry about that. And you'll probably never see it. But as you start moving into... Um, Larger spindles, especially this type, which is pretty much solid steel, that's what's going to happen. The downside is when your spindle drops, if you don't remove your bit, it's going to settle into your table. And also, if you don't pull this dust shoe off, it's just going to squish and deform this brush. Um, and it may become permanent. So... You're going to have to take this off, remove the bit every time you shut your machine off. Sometimes this won't settle, depends on how long you run it. But if you just bump it after that, then it'll start dropping. Um, any kind of movement on the machine will, will cause that settling. So I'm going to show you a couple of ideas that I have um, one of them is actually you know I thought of this one and the other one is a basic gas strut which we're gonna install on the side so we're gonna take a look at that and talk about it the first one here is an inexpensive option I went ahead and removed the dust shoe off of the spindle here this is an ABS tube you can use PVC doesn't matter it's inch and a half in diameter and what it does um, I 3d printed this ring if you don't have a 3d printer you can cut one you can rot it out of wood it doesn't have to be made out of plastic uh, I have a 3d printer so that's what mine is made out of and it just has three neodymium magnets in here so all you do is just put that here and it sticks to the top so now when your spindle settles it has a stop That way, when your brush is on here, it's not going to goof that up. You don't have to worry about removing the bit. Um, but you're still going to have that settling issue. If that bothers you, then the next route is a gas strut. I'll post links to where I bought this. This is a Magmaster car. It's a 20-pound gas strut because that's basically what I 
estimated the weight of this assembly to be. And that is to equalize the force up and down on this spindle and um, basically what this stepper motor has to lift. So it's a, basically an equal force up and down. So the settling should stop with this. It's going to be a simple installation. The strut is only $18. I have some aluminum extrusion here, which is basically going to go underneath this bolt into an L this way. We're going to put the strut here, run it all the way up to the top. What I'm going to do is run the spindle all the way up to its max length and give myself about an inch of cushion in there. And there'll be another angle up here and we'll connect the strut up here. And the settling should stop. Not only that, but it will relieve all of the stress and pressure off of the stepper motor of lifting and lowering the spindle. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting to work on this. The first part is we're going to cut this angle and install it here. We're going to cut the angle up this way and I'm going to see how that aligns. And then we're going to come back and take a look at it. We'll be right back. Got all the parts finally done for this. Um, a pretty simple thing. This bracket here um, goes here. I need to use these original 516 18 bolts for now. They're actually a little bit too short by adding this on to use lock nuts. So I had to order three and a quarter. These are threes. But no big deal. This bracket is the upper bracket up here, which mounts on this bracket here, this L channel. And incidentally, this bracket material is inch and a half by eighth inch, except for this bigger one which needs to be up here is two by two. So here's the strut. I'm gonna go ahead and use lock nuts on everything here so I don't have to worry about any Loctite. So I'm gonna start assembling this. And I'll do a little bit of explanation about this upper bracket and how I came about my dimensions. So let me go ahead and get this together and we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, so we've got this installed here. Doesn't take long, probably about 10 minutes or less. So that's the shot of the left side there. And this up here is where the top mounts. When I went about making this bracket here, um, these are 5, 16, 18 drop in P studs. Um, this is adjustable up and down so I can put if you look at this right here there's a post tension of about a half inch so I have to compress that one half inch to get that in I want a half inch of clearance on the whole upstroke 
um, compressed in. You can make it zero. This is made to where you can adjust this up and down depending on how much tension you want on the strut itself. You just loosen these up and you can raise this or lower it if you want more or less. But I don't want zero in case something goes wrong here. I don't want to um, end up pulling this strut. I don't think it will, but it's just a safety thing. So I'm going to install the top section and this is not perpendicular when you look at this I have to flip this this way I guess so you can see it better um, this is at a slight angle forward I don't think that you want these um, perpendicular or parallel you want a slight angle so you can get more pressure pushing out and you can straight up and down so it just happened to line up that way um, I couldn't get this to where I could get this totally parallel no matter what I tried it, it totally parallel ended up right here so I chose just to drill that in the middle so when I get this on you'll see what I'm talking about and then we'll turn this on and see what happens we get the top on and we'll be right back. Well, we got everything installed and this is what it looks like from top to bottom. This is the first movement of this, so this is the moment of truth here. We're going to see what's going to happen. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, raise this up to the stop. Right there, and that way I can get these blocks out. There didn't seem to be any surprises here, so that's a good thing. Let's go ahead and shut this power off and see if the spindle drops. I don't think it will, but I'm gonna shut this off, turn the enable off, and the power. Look at that, no more spindle drops. I can even push down on that and it doesn't move. That was my goal. Go ahead and go all the way to the bottom and make sure the cycle works and we'll be right back. All right, I don't want to bore you. I went ahead and cycled this all the way up and down. I'll go back up. No surprises. This thing seems to work. I'm not going to do any cutting on this obviously today, but I'll post an update on what I think of this. Um, I don't think there's going to be any issues as, as far as losing steps or anything like that. Like I said, this spindle on the whole weight of all the components of this head is about 20 pounds so this is a 20 pound gas strut from McMaster car I will post a link to the part that I used this is 19 and a half inches I believe fully extended so this is a pretty easy modification that you can probably put on any machine um, this is a pretty common approach here. It's nothing new. I didn't think of it. Uh, maybe the way I put my brackets on up top here. But other than that, um, pretty common thing. So I think we'll call this one here. We'll uh, close up this video. Once again, please like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions concerning the install of this, leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you as always. Once again, thanks for watching.